Peace. What's happening, good people? This gift here for Pay Us No Mind. And today, we're doing a walkthrough of a muse and their digital distribution upload process. What it's like to uh, distribute a release through them. Upload the audio, upload the cover artwork, fill in all your information, all of that stuff like that. What's that process like, how it flows, everything like that. I told you I was gonna do this in the uh, Amuse Pro overview video that I was gonna upload uh, an old release uh, called No Born ID and see what the process is like. And here we are, we're gonna dive into it. We're gonna see what it is. So. Buckle up, y'all. Let's drive. <laughs> All right. So we click that release button that you see. And when we click that release button, it takes us into the upload flow. And they have release details. You put the title of the release. So we're going to put No Born ID as the title. Uh, label name. I don't have a label name, but I just put Pay Us No Mind. Genre. You're going to see what genres they got. Country, dance, electronic, folk, hip-hop. Hip-hop, rap, hip-hop. We're going to select that. Hip-hop, rap, hip-hop. Okay. What language is your release title in? We're going to say English. Now we got to upload the cover artwork. It says cover art must be square, JPEG, or PNG file uh and be at least 3000 by 3000 pixels max 6000 by 6000 pixels not blurry or pixelated now they feel the need to state that because sometimes you know you get a uh cover art work rather cover artwork that is smaller than the size that they're basically enforcing the size that they're saying that you have to be you know the uh, cover artwork has to be and if you got a uh, cover artwork that's 500 by 500 and you try to uh blow it up to 3000 by 3000 it's going to be pixelated and blurry you know that's where things like that come from pixelated and blurry because you're taking a small file size and you're expanding it so that's not something you want to do you ideally want a large uh file size for your cover art that you can shrink down to the, the recommended size that they're saying that or the required file size that they're saying that you know it has to be in order to be uploaded to their platform so that's why they feel the need to state that you know if it's pixelated or blurry it's a no-go then it says uh it cannot contain social media logos or handles so no at such and such anywhere anything like that no brand logos you know so your logo and stuff like that ixnay on that any text except for artist names and or the name of the release so they don't want nothing on that cover art except whatever the artwork is your name and the name of the release and that's it no uh parental advisory stickers nothing like that and they say if it contains any of the above your release will be rejected the rules are set by the stores and we file and uh we have to follow them cut and dry so just make sure your releases are make sure your cover artwork is straight when you're doing your releases now i'm gonna select the cover art for the release. Now this is uh, to, to just let you guys know, this is a walkthrough of the desktop upload process because Amuse has a desktop and uh, a mobile upload interface. So we're gonna try test, bo test, test both uh, platforms out or uh, both options out rather, uh, starting with this one right here, the, the desktop version. So we do that. And then they say drag and drop the audio. So let's find the audio. Now, initially I did not have a, a, a wave file of this song, you know, and I had to convert it from an MP3 to a wave which I don't recommend you do. I just did it for the purpose of testing out the whole uh, flow. But here's what happens when you try to upload an MP3. It says the following tracks have errors. No born ID MP3 file format incorrect. Must be wave or flat. Now, why they are recommending that that file be a wave file or a, 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 a flat file is quality. It's uncompressed audio. Now, 
uncompressed audio can be converted into other formats like MP3 and things of that nature. So it's like a master format that can be converted into other child formats, you know, so to speak. And you have platforms like Tidal and even Amazon now that are offering high quality audio, lossless, uncompressed audio to people who are real big fans of high quality audio. And if they allowed you to upload an MP3 file and then those platforms put your release and those high quality audio tiers, people paying $20 a month for uh, access to high quality music now get a low quality song, you know, not in the terms of creativity, but in the terms of audio quality. And that could basically discourage people from paying for that high tier option, which would negatively impact a lot of different people. It would negatively impact the platform because they can't get people to pay more for the service and it would negatively impact you because you get paid more for those premium streams. So, uh, 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 or super premium because the premium streams where people are paying $10 for title, you know, you would get like around a penny per stream from, but those super premium streams where people are paying $20 a month for high quality uncompressed audio, you would get two cents per stream from that. So you want that tier to exist and you want your music available in that tier, but you don't want to shortchange those people by uh, providing them with low quality audio when that's not what they're paying for. So you want to get a WAV file of your song, like an actual WAV file, not converting from an MP3 to a WAV, but have an actual WAV where that's what you get when you leave the studio. So we're going to go back and we're going to upload the WAV file. Now, while this is upload and they give me the ability to be able to input the information, so I'm not just like stuck waiting for the upload process to finish. So they say version and you can put if it's a different version, if it's a remix, if it's a live version, if it's a remastered version, if it's an acoustic version, a demo version, uh, instrumental, karaoke, radio, extended, acapella, freestyle, all these different options they give you. Now you got the release year. Okay, does this track contain any singing? rapping or other vocals yes it does what language are your lyrics in english all right uh explicit content yes yes please track origin original remix cover so they got all of these different things here, remix, a cover. If you pick in a cover, they have this disclaimer. You need a distribution license to distribute cover songs to download stores in the United States, Canada, Mexico, India, and Pakistan. If you do not have a license, your tracks will be excluded from these territories. Okay. But it's an original work, so we good there. Now you got the ISRC code, and the ISRC code, they effectively state that, you know, if you have your own ISRC code, you can use it. But if you don't have one, they'll provide one for you. Now, TikTok, start time. This is interesting because it's giving you uh, the option to basically key in on a specific part of your song that you feel will work well for TikTok. Rather than just submitting the whole song and having people kind of figure it out for themselves, you can submit particular sections of your song or a particular section of your song that you feel like will work well. Now they got artists. You know, now I'm a primary artist, so I'm already there. But you can add other primary artists if you wanted to. And contributors. So let's see what it's like to add an artist. Let me see something. We say Billy Bodega and we say primary. Does this artist have music live on Spotify? We say, yeah, she does. Now it says Spotify profile. Now this is real cool, you know, allowing you to be able to pick the profile of the artist, either if it's you uploading your own music or if it's another artist that you work with. 
because that a lot of times be a big issue when people do digital distribution and then the release comes out and it's not on their profile page. So it kind of underperforms because people who are waiting for it to come from their profile don't get it, you know, and the, 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 uh, the reputation that they built with the platform where Spotify knows that they be getting playlisted and who listens to their music and who to push it to because of uh, knowing who listens to their music. When it goes to another profile, that's all lost, you know, and those people don't get alerted to the fact that that song exists. So it's a real big detriment, you know, when people uh, distribute a song and it shows up on a wrong profile and that happens a lot. So rather than having to do damage control and work backwards where you got to go and contact the digital distributor and tell them, hey, it's on the wrong profile and wait for that to get sorted out. They kind of do a preemptive strike by allowing you to pick the, uh, the profile beforehand. So I can say, OK, well, Billy Bodega is the feature artist here. Select her. And we know now when this release drop is going to show up on her uh, Spotify profile page and not some other Billy Bodega's profile page or not some newly created uh, Billy Bodega profile page. So that is outstanding that they allow you to do that. So we just say, OK, add as a primary artist contributors. You can do the same thing here. So you're going to say I'm going to say K drama as a contributor and I'm going to put him down as a producer. Now you got songwriters. We're just gonna say Jason Stamos, right? And then, you know, you can do your royalty splits, right? Add a split, you say add a person, Jason Stamos. Oh no, we gotta put the email. Okay, Jason Stamos. You're going to say Jason Stamos at gmail.com. None of this even exists, but it's all good. And you say split royalties. Then you put in your percentages. You put in 50% for me, 50% for him. Then we go to done. And now we're on to the next one. All right? Track list. We only got one song we pushing here. Next, it says uh, all stores, music stores. You get to pick the stores. So we can have this option selected, which says select all stores, and it'll just send it to everywhere they distribute to. Or we can uncheck that option and just pick individual stores we want to distribute to. So they give you the option of doing that, you know. Distribute to all stores, all available countries. So you can also pick particular countries that you want to release to, you know, uh, unselect all and just select the specific countries you want to release to. You know, now, why does it even make sense to restrict certain countries or restrict certain stores, you know, is if because sometimes depending on your release, you might have territory restrictions. Sometimes it's like, well, you can distribute this song in Germany, but not in the, in, in the United States. Sometimes, you know, you might buy a, a, a non-exclusive beat that has some type of uh, uh, requirement in the, in the terms of agreement that states that, you know, you might be using other digital distributors that might have uh, some clause or not a clause, but basically they distribute to stores in certain countries and you don't need a muse to distribute to those countries, then you can just exclude them, you know, or you're using one distributor to get in a certain amount of stores and you using a muse to get into some other stores that they don't distribute to or something like that. Those are reasons why, you know, being able to restrict would make sense. A release date or proposed release date, they propose uh, October 23rd is the release date, the day after my birthday, right? They say, select the date that allows you time to plan promotion of your music. We need 14 days to approve your release. So we have proposed the first available Friday, New Music Friday. Now, even though they propose a date that's on the 23rd, they have this fast lane option. 
you know, and we talked about this in the, um, the pro overview. Uh, fast lane release. We can get your song live on music services within 14 days. The earliest date is the 12th of October. And this is something that's exclusive to pro users. So we click that and you see a change. Now it's no longer the 23rd, it's the 16th. You know, October 16th, they can get this release up. Original release date, let me just say no. Review. Now you look over, single release, one track, 16 stores, 249 countries, estimated release date, uh, October 16th. You say, I'm completely sure I want to release. And then you hit that release button and it's a go. Now we're not going to hit the release button because of the fact that we got to go through the, the uh, mobile app version. So we're going to head over to the mobile app and walk through the process there and see what, that, what, what that's like. All right, good people. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look at the mobile app upload process for Amuse and what's that what that whole thing is like, you know, and 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 see what this process is like. So let's let's check it out, y'all. You know, we got this uh, new release button. We're going to click that. And then here they ask us to upload the cover art. We're going to do that. Now, this is the thing with uh the mobile app uploads. And the fact that the fact that you got to have your stuff stored in the cloud. So I'm a desktop person. So everything I got is on my desktop, you know, or in like an external drive. I don't really keep a lot of stuff in the cloud. And that's a necessity for this. So you got to have your stuff either stored in iCloud or Dropbox or on your actual device. So I had to move stuff to iCloud for the purpose of, you know, doing this thing here. So let me find the cover art. There it is. We upload that. And it says the text match matches artist name or release title exactly. There is other artist text. There is no text. So you see here, this is something that's different from the desktop version already. You know, they don't ask you these questions when you upload and through desktop. You know, this right here is also kind of like, like trick questions because if you say, there like like the text matches artist name or release title exactly there is no text uh there is other text you know if you put an option like let's let's say other there is other text you know then you see no other text than artist or release name are allowed on artwork try again you know so they kind of like making it seem as if it's not a big deal if you got that to get you to select that option and then educating you on the fact that you shouldn't select that option, you know. So that's 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 just that's just entertaining, man. <laughs> you know. But yeah, we're gonna select there is no text because that's what they want. They don't want no text. And they says, are there any visible logos in your artwork? Now again, we seen what they what they what they doing here when we did that with the first go round. If you say there are only Facebook and Instagram, it's only Facebook and Instagram logos, they're gonna be like, eh, try again, right? So it's like, there are, there, there's, there's only other logos on it. You know, it's not a brand, it's just, you know, some side logos, it's my own logo, eh, try again, they're gonna dead you. So it's like, uh, you got, there are no logos, not even on clothing or in the background. That's the option that we click there. Now, again, like I said, this is not something that they have you do on desktop. Now it says, uh, are parts of this artwork blurry or distorted in any way? No, everything is crisp. Yes, but it's intentional. Now they give you that option because, you know, like I, I believe was it a Kanye West album cover for my my um, Dark Twisted Fantasy or whatever, where he had that it was slightly blurred. You know, an uh, element of it was blurred. If you do it intentionally and it's for artistic purposes, they, they give you a pass. You know, like they're not going to deny the cover artwork simply because it's blurry if that was the intended purpose. But if it's accidental where it's pixelated or something like that, because even if it's if it's intentionally blurry, it tends to still be of high quality if it was intentional. But when it's accidental, then it just is low quality and shoddy looking and, you know, not something that you want to use to represent you. So here, I'm going to just put no everything is crisp and then confirm. 
and it uploads the cover artwork. And then we go to release title and we put no born ID for the release title. And it got release language. This much is the same. And the other thing about this process is, you know, like intuitively, when you select an option, you would look for like a, a, a done button or something like that to go back. You know, because usually with a lot of platforms, when you go backwards, like if you just click this arrow to go back, then it removes whatever you chose. But here they keep it, you know. So that's something to note. You know, you don't click done. There is no done button. You're not going to scroll down and see a done button. You just select the option that you want. You put English and then you go back and it's, you know, documented and taken into, you know, the system. Genre. Hip hop. Hip hop rap. Back. Label. Pay us no mind. track now we got to upload the, the the song now they give you two uh, two songs to upload but we only need one you know so i'm gonna just delete this this track because i don't need to upload two tracks I only i only need to upload one track so let me go back here okay no born id we're gonna upload it they give you the option to pick the version. Again, we've seen this with the desktop version where they, you know, you could remix live radio edit. So you have the same option on mobile. You can add artists here too. You know, the same process it looks like. Feature artists, primary artists. Let's type in a name. Let's see if it gives us the same stuff. Does this is this artist on Spotify? Yes. One found. There we go. Select them. It's the same process. Save artists. You got that there like that. Now you got your audio. Uploading your audio file. Let's find that. Now, one thing different here from the desktop version too, another thing rather, is the fact that you have to wait for the song file to completely upload before you get to finish uh, putting in all of the information for the release, as opposed to the desktop version where you can do all of that stuff while you're waiting for the, for the, uh, the audio to upload. Does this track contain any singing? Yes. Language, English. Let me go back. Explicit content. Yes. Let me go back. Details. ISRC code. We don't have one. They're going to provide one for us. Content. No content ID. Now, this is interesting. The fact that they have you declare whether you want content ID not or, or not here. So you select the monetize because I want to monetize for content ID. But they don't have you do this on desktop neither. Like you don't declare here or during the uh, song upload process whether you want content ID or not. They just have you uh, have YouTube content ID selected as a store. So where they have all of the stores, you have all stores selected and it distributes to everywhere, including YouTube content ID, TikTok and everything like that. But here they have you specifically declare that you want YouTube content ID. I wonder why they do it on the mobile version and not on the desktop. Original remix slash cover. We're just going to say it's an original song. The TikTok thing, they give you the option to do that here where you uh, basically isolate 
the part of the song you want people to use for TikTok, songwriters. You know, we can put songwriters here too. Contributors. You know, we can add contributors and we can do splits here too. So splits, add a person. It's going to say add a person and then we go next and put the splits save split so it's the same deal and then we go back again and delivery options same deal now but you see again Look, they have content ID here. Once again, YouTube content ID. So, I mean, that's a bit redundant to have you do it, to have you manually select it and then to have it included here too. But, you know, that's not a big deal. Then they got the proposed release date. And you click that. And when you click that, it brings you into the area where you get to activate fast lane if you're a pro user. So if you're a pro user, rather than just being stuck with whatever proposed release date you see here, you would click this option to select the release date. And that's when you would see the feature to activate fast lane, you know, so you activate the fast lane and then you get to pick a release date. Has this release been live before? We say no. Then we go to continue. And then that's it. You submit it for release and you off to the races. So we're going to, I'm going to go back and uh, correct everything with this release, then submit it and check back with y'all about how everything went down. You know, when I got some royalty reports to show y'all and we can dive into that whole aspect of it. So if you like the process, man, if you like how Amuse flow work, if you see anything that's different and notable from other services you use, you know, that you would like to shout them out for, definitely comment, let them know. You know, if there's anything that you take issue with, definitely comment and let them know. I'm pretty sure they would appreciate constructive criticism. Uh, again, as always, if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that, man, so we can get more of these videos up and rolling because I know people appreciate them and want to see them, right? So you do that, you subscribe, you like, you comment, you share, get more people in here watching these videos, man. You know, if you guys want to hit me up, you can at pay us no mind on Instagram, at pay us no mind on Twitter, pay us no mind at gmail.com. This is GIF signing off, pay us no mind. Peace, good people. One.